All right, everybody, I'm back from spring break vacation with the kids, although they're still on spring break, but I'm back at the home office. It just got back five minutes ago. And the first thing I'm doing is a vlog, a catch up on the week's developments of Fanny Willis. My goodness, so much happens in a week. <sighs> Flip with the GoPro. <laughs> Flip with the GoPro. Okay, hi-yo! Okay. We're done. Woo. That's fantastic. When I'm on the road, I feel naked. When I don't have my good microphone or my good office lighting, two floodlights, I feel naked. But we're catching up because there have been developments in the Fannie Willis, Nathan Wade disqualification scandal extravaganza, the gift that keeps on giving. After Judge McAfee's ruling, I was a little irritated with the judge. I might have been a little hard on the judge in my assessment. I stand by that assessment, my initial reaction. I stand by that tweet. I'll read it to you now. Viva Fry at the Viva Fry, Judge McAfee's ruling in the Fannie Willis motion to disqualify is a grotesque perversion of justice by the findings of fact of the ruling itself. McAfee has proven himself incapable of the requisite judicial courage of the job, and he will undoubtedly be defeated in his election unless his challenger withdraws in light of the ruling, hint, hint, and he has forever tarnished his reputation for a return to private practice so disappointing. Yeah, that might have been a bit harsh. But I can now appreciate how the judge might not have been playing 4D chess, but might have been playing at the very least some level of chess in that he might not be able to politically or other reasons make the decision to disqualify Fannie Willis. So what he did was make a decision, draft a decision, such that no appellate court could agree with his finding of law given his finding of fact. And now Trump's team made a motion for immediate review of Judge McAfee's decision because under Georgia law, from what I understand, it sounds something similar similar to Quebec law where I used to practice law, that it's not every decision that is subject to immediate judicial review. You know, you go through the process, you make your objections, you have your issues for appeal, and then you appeal those issues and an appeals court hears them in due course once the initial process has run its course. That being said, there are some decisions which are subject to immediate appeal because they cannot be undone on appeal if the process continues on. And there are other issues such as this one that are of sufficient importance that it is necessary to petition the judge who rendered the the decision for authorization to appeal because although not subject to immediate review by the Court of Appeal, if the process goes on, there could be prejudice that would be difficult, if not impossible to remedy. So you ask the judge for permission to go straight to the Appeals Court of Georgia through a motion. And if the judge grants that certificate of appeal, which Judge McAfee did not to bury the lead, then the Georgia Court of Appeal can make the decision to hear or not to hear this case. And we'll see what the Georgia Court of Appeal is going to do. I predict they are going to hear this case. And and I'm still holding out that my initial prediction that Fannie Willis gets disqualified will hold true, will be the correct prediction at the end of the day. The Georgia Court of Appeal can still save my prediction because Scott McAfee lacked the judicial courage to come to the right decision. But lo and behold, what's done cannot be undone. And now we're at the stage where Trump's team filed a motion for immediate judicial review to Judge Scott McAfee. It was a thing of beauty. We don't need to go through it. A number of other of the law tuber tubing guys have covered this story and covered the motion for immediate judicial review just suffice to say that it was well drafted, it was short, it was concise, it was to the point, and it highlighted pretty much exactly what I covered in my initial vlog summarizing the inconsistencies of Judge Scott McAfee's decision. The odor of mendacity. Just one quick passage from the defendant's joint motion for a certificate of immediate review. In its order, the court found that District Attorney Willis's actions had created an appearance of impropriety and unquote odor of mendacity end quote that lingers in this case as well as the continuing possibility that, quote, an outsider could reasonably think that District Attorney Willis is not exercising her independent professional judgment totally free of any compromising influences, end quote. And then later on they write, the court also found that District Attorney Willis's nationally televised speech at Big Bethel AME Church on January 14, 2024 was, quote, legally improper, end quote, but declined to disqualify her on the basis of this forensic misconduct and the other forensic misconduct proven by defendants, noting in particular a lack of guidance in Georgia case law for the standard for disqualification qualification of a prosecuting attorney for forensic misconduct. The odor of mendacity. That is a term that shall echo through the ages. There are memes galore that there's going to be a perfume called odor of mendacity. Hilarious. But it's an actual term that Judge Scott McAfee used in his initial ruling. He said that this case nonetheless leaves an odor of mendacity. That means a smell of dishonesty. He said in his ruling that Fannie Willis's speech in front of the church was legally improper and yet did not come to the finding of law to disqualify her from the case. Judge Scott McAfee came to the conclusion that this case could not proceed 
proceed with Nathan Wade in the file because of the appearance of impropriety. How you get to disqualifying one of the two prosecuting attorneys, but not both of them, who are involved in this scheme, I think it's judicially, legally incoherent. I do not think Judge McAfee could arrive at the conclusions of law that he arrived at, given the conclusions of fact that he arrived at, but nonetheless, he rendered his decision, and the question is going to be whether or not he set up the playing field so that the Georgia Court of Appeals could come to the right decision because he politically could not come to the right decision. We will see. But Trump's team filed a motion for immediate review. It highlighted all of the arguments I raised in my initial assessment of that case. I like to pretend that they saw my vlog and were inspired, but it's things that any reasonably critical legal mind would have found. They argue that it's logically inconsistent that he would disqualify one person but not both, that the odor of mendacity is such that this is clearly an appearance of conflict that warrants disqualification, that the judge cannot come to the conclusion that Fannie Willis's forensic misconduct was not sufficiently legally improper to warrant her disqualification from the case, and they highlight, as they should, the fact that if this case proceeds and ultimately at the end of the day, the Court of Appeals says, yes, Fannie Willis should have been disqualified, and they have proceeded to trial, to verdict, and then they have to redo the entire thing, that that is an absolute waste of judicial resources. It's an absolute prejudice to the defendants that can be avoided simply by Judge Scott McAfee authorizing immediate review from the Georgia Court of Appeal of his decision, where he totally chickened out of doing the right thing, but alas, he might be doing the right thing in disguise now because he issued immediately a certificate of authorization to appeal, and now we're waiting on whether or not the Georgia Court of Appeal is going to take this case, hear the case, and whether or not if they take the case and hear the case, disqualify Fannie Willis like she ought to have been disqualified by Judge Scott McAfee if he had the pair to do it in the first place. But it doesn't matter if we get to the right decision at the end of the day, even if we take the long way, we've gotten to the right place. Certificate of Immediate Review. Upon review of the defendant's joint motion for a Certificate of Immediate Review, the court finds that the order on the defendant's motion to dismiss and disqualify the Fulton County District Attorney issued March 15, 2024, quote, is of such importance to the case that immediate review should be had, end quote. Accordingly, the requested motion is granted. The challenged order is not one of final judgment, and the state has informed the court that it has complied with the order's demands. Thus, unless directed otherwise by an appellate court, supersedis shall only apply to the order being appealed. Quote, a trial court court's hands are not tied as to other matters not affecting those issues on appeal during pendency of such appeal, end quote. The court intends to continue addressing the many other unrelated pending pretrial motions, regardless of whether the petition is granted within 45 days of filing, and even if any subsequent appeal is expedited by the appellate court. So ordered this 20th day of March, 2024. Judge Scott McAfee. So that is the latest in the Fannie Willis judicial saga, the gift that keeps on giving Scott McAfee authorized immediate review of his decision where he did not disqualify Fannie Willis. We are waiting to see whether or not the Georgia Court of Appeals will take the case. If they do, whether or not they're going to disqualify her. I'm standing by my original prediction, not because it's what I hope should happen, but it's because what I believe ought to happen, having watched the trial, having seen the evidence, and having seen the findings of fact that Judge Scott McAfee came to that could in no way support his findings in law. We'll see what happens. One thing is for certain, we'll be talking about it Sunday night with Barnes during our Sunday night extravaganza Viva and Barnes. Six o'clock every Sunday, it is the internet's most popular YouTube law live streaming. I don't know. That's not a guarantee, but it's damn good. Come and watch it. Spend your Sunday night with us. And uh, if you like what I do, you know what to do. Like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Viva Fry on Rumble. V Viva Fry on Twitter. VivaBarnesLaw.Locals.com. On Locals, more important than anything, exercise. Get outside. Be healthy. Talk to people in real life. And now you know your vlog. Peace out, peeps. Lord, your flawed, hard-headed, and imperfect child, I'm a little confused. I appointed three special counsel, as is my right to do. Paid them all the same hourly rate. Paid them all the same hourly rate. Paid them all the same hourly rate. They only attacked one. Um, they were, he was not paid the same amount of money.